So the, let's start with the, the, the narrow data points of today and see if that's uh, changed your thinking at all. The employment cost index, wages a little higher than expected. The Michigan sentiment showing a bit of an uptick in sentiment there. Enough to cause a bit of a brief wobble in risk assets at that, as that uh, dovish pivot uh, uh, analysis was sort of questioned for a moment. Did you see anything of interest in the data? Anything that challenged your existing views? No, we didn't really see anything major. It was, as you said, a little bit worse in terms of inflation than expected, but not by a lot. The expectations were already pretty high for both the employment cost index and the uh, core PCE price index. I think it certainly underscores that inflation is way too high. And that's the reason why the Fed is hiking interest rates aggressively with 275 basis point moves at the last two meetings and probably more hikes to come. So I don't think it really changes the picture, though. Jan, when do we get a recession then? Because WIRP on the terminal is looking at cuts now uh, in May of next year. That is like not at all what the SEP looks at, the summary of economic projections. It didn't feel like that's what Jay Powell was talking about in his, in his presser as well. When do you think we get the recession and the dovish pivot? We don't have a recession in our baseline forecast, although that is a pretty close call. We do think that the, the risk of a recession over the next 12 months is you know, maybe one in three. And I do think that we, it's a narrow path to a softish landing. But I think we're still on that path. Our forecast is that the labor market continues to soften, but gradually, with most of the adjustment coming through open positions, as opposed to a sharp increase in the unemployment rate. But the, and, and, and I think we are seeing some signs that that's the path we're on. But uh, a recession is certainly very possible. In terms of market pricing, you know, I would say that the the market has a you know probability of recession that is probably also you know in the maybe one and three range. If I look at the fact that the funds rate under market pricing goes to the low to mid threes in you know around the turn of the year. And then about one third of that is unwound in the subsequent year or, or year and a half. To me, that sounds like the market is certainly putting a, a reasonable probability on a, on a recession, but not, not really as the baseline case. Because in the base, if it was the baseline case, then I, would, I think you would see even further, even deeper cuts priced in. Mm. Do, you, do you think the market is expecting the pivot from the Fed too soon, though, Jan? No, I think that the pricing of the next few meetings seems seems pretty reasonable. I mean, our forecast has been 50 basis points at the September meeting and then another 25 basis points at both the November and December meeting. And the market's reasonably close to that. Mm -hmm. Market's priced for, you know, a poss possibility of another 75 but you know, more likely 50 in September, and then, and then a slowdown, a significant slowdown as you go into the next couple of meetings towards the end of the year. So to me, that seems pretty reasonable. You know, in the baseline, I think if you stay out of recession and you have only very slow growth, well below trend growth mm -hmm. in uh, 2023, I don't think you're going to get any cuts. But again, the market is, sort of averaging over a range of different scenarios. Jan, there was a lot of question as to the offhanded comment about Powell talking about neutral uh, on Wednesday. And since then, I feel like everyone's weighed in. Um, what is neutral? And what do you think the Fed actually winds up getting to? The neutral interest rate? Yeah. A, look, I think this is something that uh, obviously plays an important role for a lot of economists. Uh, you know, my own view is that the neutral interest rate isn't a particularly useful concept. It's very hard to measure. It changes quite a lot over time. I think it's more important for the Fed, rather than hitting any particular level of a quote unquote neutral interest rate, to focus on financial conditions and make sure that financial conditions are in a place 
that 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 is you know consistent with them hitting their target over over time. Um, you know, the FOMC has a projection of neutral. It's two and a quarter to two and a half percent, and so in that sense, the comment from Powell was, you know, we've now hit that mm. uh, that level. But in my own thinking about the economy, it doesn't play a huge role. Okay, let me take you across the Atlantic to Europe then, Jan, and paint a picture for us of, of, of what the winter looks like to you in the Eurozone economy, whether we keep the taps open from Russia at very reduced levels or not. How, how troubling a time are you expecting to see economically? Because, of course, the data today actually came in much ahead of expectations, but real questions about the winter. Yes, and we are forecasting a recession in the euro area uh, you know, on the back of the reduction in, in gas flows. So even if you keep uh, some gas flows in place at you know, 40 percent or 20 percent or 40 percent of the uh, sort of pre-war flows, I think even then a uh, mild recession is likely in the second half of this year and going into next year. I think if you were to see a complete end to Russian gas shipments, which is certainly very possible, then it would be a deeper recession. But I think even without that, a mild recession is likely in the euro area as a whole. I think it would be concentrated in Germany and Italy, which mm -hmm. are the two countries that are most dependent on Russian gas. Um Jan, do you expect the ECB to be able then in that case to keep raising rates? Because the data on the high inflation today all of a sudden moved sort of to 50 basis points for the ECB in September. But no doubt they're going to be hiking into weakness. What did they do? I think they will be hiking into weakness. And I would expect them to still go 50 basis points at the next meeting. And I would expect additional, additional hikes uh, though I probably at a slower pace thereafter, we did cut our terminal uh, our, ter our terminal deposit rate forecast to one and a half percent from 175 when we moved to an outright recession call for the euro area uh, recently. But but we still do do expect increases, and it's a very difficult situation for them. The the economy, despite today's better second quarter numbers is looking pretty weak, mm. but at the same time, inflation is much too high and they continue to be quite focused on inflation. Yeah, yeah. And what was your assessment of that data today? I mean, that, that outperformance that we saw in particular in southern Europe, Italy, Spain, parts of France. Uh, one uh, CEO of a hotel company joked to me earlier on that there have never been so many Americans in the south of France, but it can't all be Americans spending tourist dollars. So what was your assessment of, of what happened there? Well, I think it has become, it has been clear for some time that Southern Europe would see a very strong uh, tourist season. And that's obviously Americans, but mostly other Europeans that are, that are spending money. There's been a lot of pent up demand for uh, holidays. And I think we're seeing that even more clearly in the numbers than we had anticipated. Uh, yeah, I, I joked. I was like, we're all there. No one's here. Definitely no one's here in New York. Um, Jan, before we let you go, uh, next Friday is Jobs Friday. I feel like that snuck up on everybody. Uh, what are you looking for, the most important part, and what's your call? We don't have a forecast yet for, for next Friday. We always finalize that over the weekend before the, before the number. I would say that there are clear signs of deceleration in the labor market data that I think are going to become more visible in the payroll numbers over time. I mean, over the last three months, payrolls have grown around 400,000 a month, but household employment has basically shown no growth. And you know, typically, when you, when you see divergences over one month, you put almost all the weight on payrolls and, and almost none of the weight on household employment. But if it, pers if it persists over a longer period, then I think you do put some weight on household employment, and I think that will increasingly show up in payrolls as well. So I would uh, expect a relatively sharp slowdown in payroll growth over the next few months.